Hi everyone, this is Rachel and I'll just be doing a short tutorial on how to use the MOEA framework uh, GUI. So to download um, the software, you're going to go to moeaframework.org and go to the Downloads tab. Um, and you'll scroll down and download the all-in-one executable. Um, as of right now, the latest version is 1.15 and you can also download previous releases on this uh, same website. So I've already downloaded the framework to my desktop. Um, so you're going to, uh, your download will be in a .jar uh, file and you'll double click and it'll open right away. Um, so it's pretty simple and intuitive to use. Um, you have controls for your algorithm, um, your test functions, which are all uh, built-in test functions that you can read about in the documentation. Um, you can choose the number of random seeds uh, for analysis and change the number of uh, function evaluations. Um, and all the algorithms are set to their default parameterization uh, given by the author of the algorithm. So just as a test problem, I'm going to run Epsilon NSGA2 on DT, DTLZ1, and this is the two-dimensional version of that. And uh, the MOEA framework will run this problem in real time. So you can see it going through all 10 seeds and um, what it's plotting right now is a additive epsilon indicator. So you can see that performance improves as you go across the number of function evaluations. And the shaded regions um, cover the 25th to 75th percentile and the dark red line is the median performance. So um, once the run is finished, you can look at um, the displayed uh, metrics tab here, and you can see um, right now we're on additive epsilon indicator. If we go down to approximation set, we can see um, for the two objective problem, um, the values are plotted against each other. And um, we can look at other uh, performance metrics like generational distance. You can see that improves through time. Um, inverted generational distance. Uh, if we look at number of function evaluations, we can see that increasing linearly. Um, Hypervolume. And number of dominating improvements. And since epsilon NSJ2 does adaptive population sizing, we can look at uh, the size of the population through time. So now we have um, 10 seeds of epsilon NSJ2 uh, for 10,000 function evaluations each. And we can continue to run different algorithms. So right now I'm going to go to uh, a rotational variant of DTLZ1 2D. Um, and since this problem is rotated, it's a harder problem. So we can um, just change the problem and rerun it. And you'll see that um, this problem is showing up in a different color. Um, the Java applet will automatically um, choose the colors for you. I don't think there's a way to set the colors. But as you can see, um, since this problem is harder, the performance on additive epsilon indicator um, does not uh, reach the same performance level as for the um, easier problem. And if we want to uh, compare one more. I'm going to leave this on the rotational variant and see how um, 
epsilon MOEA performs on this problem. So as you can see, um, epsilon MOEA, um, it outperforms um, epsilon NSGA2 in um, the lower function evaluations, but um, epsilon NSGA2 catches up and they have similar performance um, at the end of the run. Um, so this is just an example of uh, some very simple things you can do with the built-in uh, non-proprietary algorithms. All these algorithms are uh, open source and available to the public and with the available built-in test functions. How you can just do a simple analysis comparing uh, two different algorithms or even the same algorithm on uh, different difficulties of a problem. So thanks for watching.